The previous video covered techniques for polynomials and rational functions, proper fractions, long division, quotients and remainders, and factoring with multiplicity. This video is the last and most important of the polynomial techniques I need to understand the integrals of rational functions. The technique I'm going to introduce here is called partial fractions, and it's an important technique for working with polynomials throughout mathematics, not just for integration problems. It starts by talking about fractions and common denominator. If I want to add two fractions together, I need a common denominator. This was true for number fractions and likewise true for rational functions, for polynomial fractions. So let me briefly remind you how this works with a couple of examples. If I want to add together 1 over x minus 3 and 1 over x plus 4, I need a common denominator. Here the two fractions have nothing in common in their denominators, so the common denominator is the product of the two denominators, x minus 3 times x plus 4. To make a common denominator, I multiply both top and bottom of the first fraction by x plus 4, and both top and bottom of the second fraction by x minus 3. The resulting numerator denominator is x plus 4, sorry, the resulting numerator is x plus 4 plus x minus 3, which simplifies down to 2x plus 1. If I want, I can multiply out the denominator to get 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x minus 12, and this is the result of the addition of the two individual fractions. Here is another more complicated example. The denominators of these two rational functions do have something in common, x minus 3. So the common denominator doesn't need to repeat the x minus 3. It will be x squared times x minus 3 times x minus 1. To make this, I need to multiply the first fraction by x minus 1, multiplying on the top and bottom, of course, and the second by x squared, again, multiplying the top and bottom, of course. Then, both fractions have the same denominator, and I can combine them by adding numerators, producing this fraction. Depending on how I want to present the answer, I can multiply out the two binom binomials from the first numerator and then add the x squared to that combination, which would produce a numerator of x cubed minus 2x plus 2. This time, I'm leaving the denominator in factored form. And this here is the result of adding the two fractions using common denominator. So that was common denominator, taking two fractions and combining them into one. What if I want to do the opposite? Say I have a rational function with numerator p of x and a factored denominator, multiples of these qi of x terms. Can I undo common denominator? Can I pull this apart into a sum of a bunch of smaller pieces? What would the new numerators p, i of x be? How would I calculate them? This is what the technique of partial fractions aims to do. It is the opposite of common denominator. Many problems can be approached more effectively when the complicated fraction is split up into the sum of various smaller and simpler pieces. The term partial fractions reflects this idea. It breaks a single rational function, a fraction, up into various parts. So how is this done? The easiest way to demonstrate the technique is through example, so I'll jump right into an example. To start with, I need a proper rational function with a factored denominator, using two of the ideas from the previous video, proper fractions and factoring. Since the denominator is factored, I know what the denominators of the smaller pieces must be. I want x plus 1 and x minus 6. Also, since the original is a proper fraction, I am also guaranteed that the individual pieces will be proper fractions. The denominators are linear factors, and linear is degree 1, so for a fraction to be proper with a linear denominator, the numerator must be degree 0, which is a constant. Therefore, the partial fractions for this rational function will be some constant a over x minus 6 plus some constant b over x minus 1. The idea here is to write down the partial fractions that I expect to get with unknowns in the numerator. This is a very common way to solve problems in mathematics. Write down what you think the solution should look like, and try to work out the details. How do I work out the details here? How do I solve this for a and b? <laughs> well, I just do common denominator. Doing common de denominator on the right should produce the same combined fraction as I started with on the left. So I multiply the first fraction by x plus 1 and the second by x minus 6, top and bottom of course. 
Then the denominator now matches the original. I rearrange the numerator a bit. There are two x's here, so I'll group those together as a plus b times x. And there are two constants here as well, so I'll group those together as a minus 6b. Now I have an equation of rational functions. The denominators are the same, so the numerators must also be the same. So I can write this just as an equation of the numerators. Well, here is that equation of the numerators. And this is now an equation of polynomials. Two polynomials are the same only if every single coefficient is the same. Well, this can give me a system of equations. In front of the x is a plus b on the right, and just 1 on the left, because there's just an x alone. Therefore, a plus b must be equal to 1. The constant term on the right is a minus 6b, and the constant term is 2 on the left. So 2 must be equal to a minus 6b. And I have produced a system of two equations in two unknowns. Well, now I try and solve this system. In the first equation, I can isolate a equal to 1 minus b, and I can put this into the second equation, replacing a with 1 minus b. This produces an equation that only involves the variable b, and then I solve that for b, and the result is b is negative 1 7th. Finally, I just use the first equation again and this known value of b to find a, and a will work out to 8 sevenths. And now I have my result, the decomposition of this rational function into its partial fractions is 8 over 7 over x minus 6 plus negative 1 over 7 over x plus 1. That was an example to illustrate, but here is a description of the general algorithm. I start with a proper rational function with a factored denominator. Then I write the decomposition that I expect, but with unknown constants in each numerator. Then I take this split up version and I go back to common denominator. I look at the numerators once the denominators are the same. I group the numerators by the coefficients of the polynomial, and this produces a system of equations, one equation for each polynomial coefficient. Then I solve this system. The system gives me the unknown numerators, so I finish by just writing down the final decomposition. It's a complicated algorithm, but it is algorithmic. If you start with the right setup, this will work every time. Here is one more example. I have a proper rational function, degree 2 in the numerator and degree 3 in the denominator. The denominator is factor, and all the factors are linear. This should split up into three partial fractions, each one with a constant over one of the linear factors. Then I take the right side to common denominator. For each piece, I'll multiply by the denominators of the other two pieces. Then I multiply out the binom binomials and the unknowns to get nine terms in the numerator. Then I group these by polynomial coefficient, the terms with x squared, the terms with x, and the constants. Now the denominators are the same, and the numerator is in the right form, so I change this to an equation just of the numerators. This is an equation of polynomials. I need to compare the coefficients. On the left, there is 1x squared, 0x's, and 1 constant. I match these up so that a plus b plus c is 1, negative 5a minus 2b minus c is 0, and, neg and 6a minus 3b minus 2c is 1. This is a system of equations. I'm not going to show the details of solving this system. I asked a computer to solve it for me, and you're welcome to do this step by computer as well on the assignments. I don't need to see any of the details of solving the system. The result here is three numbers for a, b, and c. So here was my setup, and here were the three numbers that I got out of the system. This lets me finish the process. Here is the partial fraction decomposition for this rational function. I have successfully split up one complicated fraction into three smaller, simpler fractions.